welcome, friends, to Wonderful Word Wednesday. I'm Barb Nemechek. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Nemechek. And this week, we're going to continue talking about the Advent wreath and the next candle. Last week, we heard about the first candle. It was called the prophet's candle, and it signifies hope. The prophets had hoped that a Savior was coming to earth to save them. Now we too should have hope of Jesus' second coming. Now last week I shared with you all that not all Advent wreaths over the centuries looked like the one we use today. Some had different number of candles, some had different colored candles. But we hope that everyone out there watching us has an Advent wreath to use during this current Advent season. You don't need to have a wreath that looks exactly like ours behind us or that even has colored candles. And even you don't need to have a wreath, but you should at least have four candles so you can light one each of the four weeks of Advent. Jim, would you please light our candles? Oh, of course. A prayer. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. Advent is a time to stir up and rekindle our faith in the Lord. The wreath and its prayers provide us a special way to prepare for Christmas. This good tradition helps us to remain vigilant in our homes and not lose sight of the true meaning of Christmas. The second candle is called the Bethlehem candle. It is a reminder of Mary and Joseph's journey from Nazareth to the little town of Bethlehem. I'm going to show you a map here, um, bring it to the camera a little bit. The upper tag is Nazareth, the lower tag is Bethlehem. So the journey was between these two spots. So the trip to Bethlehem it was about 70 miles. And back in Bible times, people making this long trip would take perhaps five to 10 days, according to historians. The people traveling would carry food with them, like bread, herbs, and oil, and perhaps some dried fish as an extra protein boost for them on the way. Their water they would also need to be carried, and they would do that within wineskins. Mm -hmm. The people of Bethlehem knew that there was something special about their town. God had made a special promise to send the Messiah. Messiah means expected deliverer or chosen one. God had promised that he would deliver his people from their sins. This Messiah would be the savior of the world. God had promised it in his word that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And you can find that in Micah chapter five, verse two. Now the people of the time had been waiting a long time for God's promise to send a Messiah. When God makes a promise, however, he keeps that promise. His promise may take longer than you and we think it should happen or expect, but God is indeed faithful and will deliver on what he says he will do. Mm -hmm. Let's tell the story of Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem. And this is found in the book of Luke, chapter two, verses one to seven. Every person must report at once to the government officers in the city where your family came from. The ruler, Caesar Augustus, has commanded that each person do this. You must obey and go. Caesar wanted to count all the people and this is how he was going to find out how many people he was ruling over for tax purposes. So Joseph, of course, also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, also known as Bethlehem, because Joseph was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. 
now it is fitting that the Christ child was born in Bethlehem because the name Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of bread. And Jesus is the bread of life who gives himself his flesh and blood as food for eternal life. Mm -hmm. God could have had the Messiah born in a more prominent place like Jerusalem, but God chose the little town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem reminds us that the small shall become great, the last shall become first. Now God could have had Christ born in, say, Caesar's palace, mm -hmm. but he was born instead quietly in a stable with straw for a bed. Think about that. Of all the places the Messiah was to be born, God chose Bethlehem because of what the prophets had foretold earlier about the Savior. God is faithful in keeping those promises. Some Christian churches say that this Bethlehem candle represents faith, while other Christian churches say that it represents love, and still other Christian churches say it represents peace. A reason can be given for each of those virtues that follows the story of Mary and Joseph. First, let's talk about faith. The story shows the faith that the people had for years that God was going to send them a savior. And then there's the faith and the obedience of Mary and Joseph when Mary became with child through the Holy Spirit. We, you and I and us, need to have that faith when we're facing our own fears and uncertainties and trust that God indeed does have a plan for us. The closer that you feel to God, the easier it will be to have faith in him. Second, this story shows deep love that God has for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. In the fourth week of Advent, we will talk more about love. Finally, let's talk about peace. December for a lot of folks can often be a time of loneliness, stress, anxiety, and there's so many bills and demands on our time and our attentions. This year, 2021, can be the ongoing COVID cases and political climate that adds to stress. We can easily say that it's difficult to feel any peace, but keep in mind, however, that Mary and Joseph also had demands on their attention at their time in the Bible, being forced to travel far in under difficult conditions for this census. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, for unto you a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Notice it says, Prince of Peace. Peace comes at the feet of Jesus. Keep in mind that we should all be focused on Jesus during this Advent. Don't watch what other people are doing. Stay focused on the blessings that Jesus and his deepest peace will fill your heart. Mm -hmm. In closing, remember some people at the time of Jesus' birth thought that Bethlehem was insignificant? Sometimes we too may feel insignificant or unimportant. If you are feeling that way, remember God sees potential for greatness in you. You need to see yourself like God sees you. In God's eyes, you have great potential and are significant. So this Christmas, you all, we all, could have our own Bethlehem moment. The same Christ that was born in the city of Bethlehem thousands of years ago could be born in all of us by drawing closer to him. You can do this through Bible readings and through prayer. Let your heart be filled with faith, love, and peace. And let us end now in a word of prayer. Dear God, please prepare our hearts to celebrate your birth joyfully. 
We thank you for faithfully doing what you have promised long ago when you sent your son to earth so that we might have a chance to become part of your family. Let the promise of your second coming inspire us to live with hope and purpose. As we wait for your plan to unfold, give us the patience we need. Remind us of the peace we can access when we take time to still ourselves before you and remember that you are God. You may add your own intentions at this moment. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. See you next week when we talk about the third of the Advent candles. Exactly. Have a good one. Bye.